Mondays. Thanks for joining me again today. We're going to do a quick little routine for the abs and the ass. It's one of the things I get asked about the most, so that's what we'll address today. We'll start from the seated position and we'll bring the fingertips up to the shoulders. And we're just going to rotate and get some work going in the obliques. Now, as I've said in previous videos, some people like to keep their gaze forward. Some people like to take their gaze with them. And it's just a matter of personal preference. There's no right or wrong, just whatever feels good to you. You could do this from the standing position as well, but it's easier to isolate when you're from the seated position. Next, we'll come into boat pose and boat pose sit-ups. So I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see what I'm doing. You can stay oriented just as you are. So we'll bring your calves out parallel to the floor, lifting up with the center of your chest like there's a string at the center of your chest lifting you up to the ceiling. You could just hold this here if you wanted to. You can also come down and up. Down and up. Down and up, down and up. So you're not quite going to the floor. And when you do pull up back into boat pose, you want to pull the belly button straight down toward the floor. Now we'll drop your feet and lie back onto your shoulders. Breathe in bridges. So you're going to squeeze your cheeks, press the hips up toward the ceiling, push into the heels, and roll the spine down. So the tailbone is always the first thing to come away from the floor, and it's the last thing to articulate back to the floor. If you want more, you can always come onto the balls of your feet and you'll have to press up a little bit higher. This bothers some people's knees, so again, just if it works for you, then it works. If it doesn't work for you, go back to what you were doing that felt the most comfortable. If you want even more from here, you could take Papa Bear, and that is your supporting foot is flat to the floor. You come up into a bridge and kick one foot up, Bring it all the way back down. Take it on the other side. A lot of people will try to come onto the ball of their foot when they're doing a one-legged bridge, and all that will do is just strain your ACL. So we don't want you to do that. We want the supporting foot to be flat to the floor. Now if you want more, we can come up so that you're doing Tibetan tables. The fingertips point at the hips, and you'll press the hips up and forward, pressing into the heels. And you're trying to bring your back parallel to the floor. If this doesn't work for your wrists, you can always come back to your elbows. You won't go up as high. And if this bothers your shoulders, you might be best served just sticking with the breathing bridges with the shoulders on the floor. Good. Now we're gonna come onto the belly. So just flip yourself over. You'll bring your hands underneath you, kind of I dream of Jimmy style. You can just rest your chin on the hands and you'll sort of pretend like there's strings at the tips of your heels that are lifting you up toward the ceiling. 
So the leg is straight as you do this. A lot of people will bend their knees and all that will do is put pressure in the small of your back. And we don't want that. So it's okay if your feet just barely lift up off the floor. Also be careful not to push your belly into the floor, trying to lift yourself up. Now press the hands under the shoulders, curl the toes under, and you can press up and back so that you're in all fours position. We'll step back into your plank or a modified plank. Remember, you can always be on the fists or on the forearms or on the knees. Whatever you feel serves you best. We just want you to find a plank that you can hold. So it's really important that you don't drop your belly here. Sort of curl your tailbone under and pull your belly button up away from the floor. If you'd like a little extra challenge, you can dip one hip and then the other. You keep your shoulders parallel to the floor. A lot of people want to dip really deeply and that's not what we're aiming for. Keep the shoulders parallel, just slightly dips in the hips. Now you can come down to all fours and we'll take an offset plank, bird dogs. So we'll take your right leg and your left arm out. And it gets really important to show drop your belly, pull your belly away from the floor, reach as far as you can with your arm and your leg. So you're using both your abs and your abs to hold your arm and your leg up. If you want more challenge, you can do this from full plank. Most people do it improperly and they lock out their joints, so I don't recommend it, but if that's where you want to go, you're more than welcome to try. We'll bring this down and take it to the other side, the left leg and the right arm. Reaching in opposite directions with the hand and the foot, belly is pulled up away from the floor, and the tailbone is curled under slightly. and bring this down. We'll now take this out to the side. So you bring your palm to the center of the mat and you can take your arm and your leg out. So it's a really narrow plane. My left knee is in line with the heel of my left hand and my left toes are pointing at the right arch. Here's your baby bear. Here's your papa bear. If you want more of a mama bear, you can be here. For Papa Bear, you can add some movement. You can take the right arm up overhead and crunch. Pull your belly in toward your backbone and you're bringing your elbow and your knee together out in front of you. And some people will feel this on their working side. Some people will feel this more on their supporting side. But you'll feel your glutes engaged in trying to stabilize you here. So we'll take this on the other side. Again, you might be at baby bear, you might be at mama bear, you might be at papa bear, or you might just hold full side plank and that is your stopping point and that's challenging by itself, but it just doesn't put quite as much strain on the low back, and it doesn't ask so much of your abs, arms, and legs. And release. So that's just a quick way to address your abs and your glutes for a few minutes every day. If you don't have time or you don't have equipment, it's something you can do really easily. It's a really narrow footprint. If you're in a hotel, for example, you don't need a whole lot of room. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you need more, let me know over at the Champion of Shockers Facebook page and I'll be happy to accommodate you. Rock out with your core belt.